Hey everybody, this is Paul DeBettings. Uh, we're doing a take two version of the webinar that uh, Josh Rock and I did um, last week, um, Social Media the Basics for the Winona Area SHRM Group, uh, leading up to the event uh, next uh, Monday and Tuesday down in Winona. So we're doing another version of the webinar from uh, that we did last week because we had a little bit of a technical glitch. So it happens now and again, but we're taking a, another shot to run through this. So. Uh, it's just me uh, doing the presentation this evening, um, and uh, I've got a bit of a cough, so if it gets annoying, I'll apologize ahead of time, but uh, my name is, uh, ooh, let's hit the right button here, way to go. Okay, that's Josh Rock. Uh, Josh is going to be down in Winona uh, with me on Monday night, um, heading up the, uh, the gathering, doing answering some social media questions. Um, feel free to uh, hang out with us on Monday evening. Uh, Josh works at Job Day Glinka, who is sponsoring this webinar. Hence the logo, the logo right there. Um, Josh is a really cool guy. He's also the conference director for the Minnesota SHRM state event that's going to be in Rochester this fall. That's a picture of me. I'm Paul DeBettings. I'm an IT recruiter here in Minneapolis. Uh, I've been writing a blog for a number of years, do a lot of speaking on different social media recruiter HR topics, and I'm pretty involved in the tech community here in Minneapolis. So we're just trying to set everything up for and get used to this, folks. I'm going to be hopping out of these slides a little bit. Um, this is what we're setting it up for, though. Um, Jennifer McClure from uh, Unbridled Talent, uh, she's in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, is coming in for the uh, Winona event next week on March 13th. So. Um, looking forward to seeing you and everyone else there, and particularly to be able to see my friend Jennifer. Um, it's been a while since we've had a had a good hug, so we're looking forward to that. So to the presentation itself, I am going to be swapping out quite a bit from the deck here that you're seeing to some live uh, sort of demos, so kind of get used to that a little bit. When you get these slides, uh, when you get the slide deck, you're going to notice you can click on these links. I'm not going to play this here. It's a four-minute version of a YouTube video, um, and it's the third version now of what's called Social Media Revolution. It goes through, goes through some really cool and interesting statistics on social media. Uh, you know, if Facebook were the, you know, were a country, it's the X largest one in the world. Um, how many YouTube uh, videos are posted every hour, minute kind of a thing. Uh, definitely something that you can take a look at later on uh, to get an idea of what is all of this social media stuff. Here's a question that I get quite frequently. It's, you know, what's the deal with social media? It seems like it's everybody that's wasting time, Facebooking their friends, this, that, the other thing. Um, I will tell you, I don't think social media is the problem. It's me, I'm the problem, or the user is the problem. Not Facebook, it's not Twitter, it's not LinkedIn, it's the problem, it's us as users. So can it be a time suck? Sure it can be. I also would argue with you that um, it's also a really cool communications tool, and, and I'm going to give you a bunch of reasons as we go through this session why I think social media is important to us as, social, uh, as, to, to us as HR practitioners, for us as recruiters, uh, and again, whether you're on the corporate side or the search firm side like I am, um, this is a pretty. This can be a very important tool for us to be using. I also get uh, uh, a lot of times folks will say, "Well, you know, Facebook is free and Twitter is free." Yeah, you know, it is that the tools are free, but our time uh, is not free. And so I always just say to folks, make sure we're doing an apples and apples comparison versus apples and potatoes um, to kind of give you an idea of what I'm trying to think about is. You can post jobs on Facebook. You can network with folks on Twitter. Um, and while that's free, your time isn't. But then again, when you're on a job board, when you're on your own career page and what and, and the traditional tools, um, those are uh, also taking care of our, are also eating up our time too. So what I'm trying to get to is, is it's not free, but it's still a pretty cool tool and it can be in a very effective way. I'm going to just breeze through a couple of these slides. These are the current buzzwords going on uh, for a long time in the social media space. Um, they are as uh, important now as they were, you know, two, three, four years ago. This will kind of set up some of the next slides. We're going to go through LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, we're going to concentrate on those three sites for the most part during this session. But everyone always says, well, what do I use these different sites for? Uh, I want you to think of LinkedIn as being at work, Facebook as being at home, Twitter is a bit like an ongoing networking um, uh, networking event. 
So while we might be sharing some personal things on some of these sites, on the professional side, here are the other things that we could be sharing. You know, I did just, and you'll see here in a bit, I tweeted out that I was redoing this webinar this evening. Uh, we'll show you how it is that people are posting information about the SHRM event next week, uh, industry articles, and, and different ways to interact with folks. So we're going to get into that as we get through the presentation. So as we just get started now, I want you to think about your LinkedIn profile and ask yourself, would you connect with you? Or if I was coming in to interview you, interview with you at your company about a position that you have posted, um, I'm guessing that you've already done some background information on me. Maybe you've looked at my own LinkedIn profile. I guarantee you that I've looked at yours. And so we're going to talk a little bit about our own LinkedIn profiles as HR practitioners. There are some basic things that I'm not going to get totally into because I'm hoping you've already done this stuff with your LinkedIn profile. Um, and I know you know this, but you know, fill out your summary in your experience section. Uh, I did. Uh, I have a recruiter group here up here in up here in Minneapolis, and I was going through some profiles while I was trying to figure out if they, if the folks wanting to join the group were indeed in recruiting or HR. And uh, about a third of the profiles I looked at were bad at best or sucked at worst. Um, HR folks, recruiter folks whose own LinkedIn profiles don't have an adequate summary. Um, and then in the experience section, which is effectively your resume, there's just nothing in those fields. So here are some ideas, just real quick on those, about adding the skill sets and the titles that you're, you're uh, recruiting for. You might want to add your work email address. Some folks are shy of doing that. Some folks are worried about spam, and I understand that. But uh, I would argue, I would argue that it makes it easier for candidates, for networking, for peer-to-peer -peer conversations, to, for folks to have our email address. But I'll leave that part up to you. So think about the content that you're adding in your profile. There are some things I want you to take a that I want to be really specific about. Uh, one is is the headline. Uh, it's a professional-looking photo of me. Yeah, I'm not the, I'm not the best looking dude around, but at least my photos come out okay most of the time. But I want your headline to be who you are. So you could be saying that you are an HR generalist in Winona, um, and you're looking to connect with a certain kind of person, or you're hiring, or whatever it might be. But think about your headline as just that. Why would somebody want to connect with you? You want to be able to attract visitors um, to your profile. So again, photo, professional, not casual. I see some casual photos out there. Again, LinkedIn being a work site, maybe your Facebook photo shouldn't be the one that's on your LinkedIn profile. Uh, a commonly missed thing by most folks is that on LinkedIn you can have your own, well, you have your own URL, but for many of you, if you have not yet customized it, it's going to be a series of forward slashes, letters, and numbers. And what I want you to do is to customize this and uh, add your name. Now, I have MN Headhunter because six years ago when I started the blog, um, it was the nickname that stuck. And what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to hop out of the slide here. I'm going to pull this up. Uh, I'm going to pull up my profile. And it'll take a minute for it to... Uh, Scroll up here. Scroll down here a bit. Public profile URL. What I would like you folks to think about doing is make it so that your last name, first name dot last name, last name, first name, whatever it might be. You see, when you've got a last name like mine, Debetting, most folks can't pronounce it, most folks can't spell it. So I always just suggest you want to use your name. Uh, and again, I just went with the blog name from years ago and the nickname that has stuck. But the idea that you can leave this public profile URL in lots of places, if you're leaving a link, if you're leaving a comment on an industry site, maybe it's your local newspaper, uh, having your URL for uh, your business card, um, these are some things, this is one of those things that commonly gets missed in the HR space. Coming back to the slide deck here. Another thing that gets missed a lot is websites. The default on here is always personal website, company website. Um, you get an option um, to have up to three websites linking out. What I want you to do is to go in and click on other. And again, I'll show you how to do that here. It's just above the public profile URL. And I click on edit. So when you 
click on edit, these are the defaults, right? Personal website, company website, these. I want you to click on other. I want you to enter in your company name and then link to the website. I want you to link to your careers page. Maybe you're going to link to your product catalog. What I want to get you to think about is make it so that this is, uh, for a lot of you, LinkedIn is going to be your, think of a tire. LinkedIn is going to be your hub, and these are your spokes going out. Right, so you could link to work-related stuff. Maybe you have a profile of your own. Maybe you have a, a, a Pinterest, which is a very popular site right now. Maybe you're on Pinterest and you want people to be able to go check out what you're pinning over there. Uh, maybe you've got a, 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 a face or a, a photo album on, on Flickr, which is a popular website. So you could have these these folks. These three websites can go out to anything. But what I want you to do is rename them. Right? We tend to vote, we tend to go to websites where we know where we're going to um, ahead of time. Another thing to think about is your email addresses. Um, when you're creating your profile, if you already have a profile, most of us just have one one email address in there, and it's usually our work email address. I want you to add another one um, for a couple of reasons. One is what happens if um, you're no longer working at the company you're at today, whether by choice or by force. You don't remember your, your uh, password to LinkedIn. You log into your, your computer at home. You can't remember your password. You want to have your password sent to you, but it's going to be sent to the work email address you no longer have access to. And that's going to suck, right? So I want you to add a, a secondary uh, email ad address. The other reason why I want you to do this is that um, you can upload an email address book, and if you've got like a, a Winona State alumni, or you have your uh, Winona State email address from when you were an undergrad, and you volunteer somewhere, you have your normal work email address, you have a home email address. Um, the email address is how we find folks when we're uploading those address books. What I want you to think about is if I only have your Winona State email address, but you have your work email address, I might not be able to find you through the address book on LinkedIn. That might sound confusing, but I promise you, if you understand, um, the email, uh, maybe I should just click X out of this and show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. Uh, wow, I haven't done this in a while. I'm trying to remember where it is. Wait for it. Wow. Doing a webinar at 9 o'clock at night on your own and not remembering how to do something is really, oh, I'm sorry, how about I just go to connections or contacts and then connections? Yikes. Sorry about that. It's been a long day. And it kind of takes a while because I've got a number of connections here on LinkedIn. I click on imported contacts. Hopefully that doesn't keep spinning for too long. I'm not going to wait a whole lot longer. Okay. So you can see that I've updated some contacts here. And it's by email address. So that's what I'm getting to is if, um, oh, I'm just scrolling down to somebody off the top of my head who I know really well. Take Amanda, who's a recruiter at Backspace. If she were to be using her, if I had the email address for her um, at, say, her college alumni, and she doesn't have that in her address book, Amanda's going to not show as being on LinkedIn in my address book. Like I said, I know that's complicated, but once you start playing around with this, it'll make a little bit more sense. So going back to the to the slide, and I've kind of gone off gone off on a tangent here, which I undoubtedly will do again. Uh, the idea is that you want to add all the email addresses that you have access to. I'll just leave it at that for now. Another thing is on your LinkedIn profile, I would say to folks, add the groups and associations that you belong to. Um, it's for a few reasons. One is, of course, you're showing that you're um, 
your into your industry. Two is these are all keywords that are important for people to be able to find you on LinkedIn. Right? So I know that people are looking for Minnesota IT recruiters. And so I'm adding the groups and associations that I belong to, but notice how many times Minnesota and recruiter um, are in here. So when someone's doing a search for Minnesota recruiter, Minnesota IT recruiter, I will rank better than some other folks um, by the way that the uh, LinkedIn um, search engine works. The other part is that you just want to be able to show common commonalities with folks, right? Like under interest, um, it says, you know, my pastimes include fishing, college football, especially the Gophers. Right, I'm a, I'm a huge college football fan. I've been a Gopher football season ticket holder since I was 11 years old with my dad. Um, 30, what, 31 years now, I've missed 11 games, and I've traveled to 9 or 10, which means I'm almost even. Almost all my conversations with folks start out with something on my LinkedIn profile not related to work. Right? It could be that I'm involved in a, in a tech group here in town. It could be Gopher football. I was a fraternity boy was it when I was on campus at the University of Minnesota. It's those ways of being able to add more content to your profile to um, create more conversations with them. So again, I know you know that part about the summary and the experience section, but there's a few of these things I wanted to do, folks, to really um, add some more content to your LinkedIn profile. I've added this one slide here because I want you to I want to start thinking about how to be able to do some advanced searches. So what I want you to be able to do is I hop off the slide here. Think of an advanced search. So let's say I wanted to be able to, and this is what that slide uh, was showing. Let's say I was looking for people who are in HR or human resources or recruiter. And maybe I just, I'm looking to network with some folks. Um, and I forgot to look up the uh, Winona um, postal code, so I'll just do the one here in Minneapolis. I'm looking for people who are currently in this role in or near 55401. And I'm going to take this down from 50 miles to, let's call it 25 miles. And I'm going to hit search. So again, think about maybe you need to recruit somebody, maybe you just want to network with peers and colleagues. So because of the number of connections that I have, because of the groups that I belong to, and also because I've upgraded my account one stage, um, I think I spend worth 15 or 20 bucks, whatever it is a month, um, I have 10,791 results for the search phrase HR or human resources. Wait, actually, I need to put human resources in quotes. We're searching just specifically for that phrase, although I don't think it's going to change the result that much. Oh, it did. Remember it was 10,791, now it's 9,309. So you want to search for people who have HR or human resources as a phrase or recruit somewhere in the profile. Now, I can now start figuring out from there who has worked, who is working right now at Best Buy. And I can click current and I can hit search. Now I'm down to 107 folks. In some ways, it will be Accenture folks who are working at Best Buy. But the idea behind this is that this is a way of being able to um, network. You can go further down. I can start doing it by connections, by the industry, um, where they went to school. So I could figure out who are those folks with that title who went to school at the University of Minnesota like I did, and there are 10 of them. So remember when I wanted you to fill out your profile as much as you can? Here's the other reason why. You want to be able to be found. If these folks had not put University of Minnesota as their school in their profile, they would not be popping up right now. So what I want to quick do, I haven't tried this. So I'm a little bit scared to do anything live. I guess this is sort of live, right? Going back down to school name. What if I did Winona? And I didn't do the Open Ohio State University. I suppose I need to get. I probably need to get rid of. Let's do then 100 miles. Yeah, again, oh, it wouldn't work at Best Buy. Sorry. 
Ooh, so I have 129 results of folks with HR, human resources, or recruiter who are within 100 miles of downtown Minneapolis who went to a known state university. Actually, the number is 129. So again, if you were trying to, re to, to, to network with your peers and your colleagues in, and, and you wanted to find folks who you may have wanted to school with, this is a way of being able to do it on LinkedIn. I don't want to get too much further into that because this becomes a pretty involved process, but I wanted to just give you an idea of how you can be doing some advanced searching on um, LinkedIn. Um, of course, you're always limited on LinkedIn by the number of connections in the group and whether or not you've upgraded your account. Here are some examples of being able to do these searches using Google or Bing uh, in the search engines because they um, are graphing the LinkedIn, the public LinkedIn profiles and indexing them. So that looks like a bunch of it's a mess of words in there. All I would ever want you to do is change Best Buy to another company name, or maybe you want to add Winona State University. Okay. Uh, and then down here, Boolean Black Belt and Refer Yes. These are a couple of uh, resources for you to click on when you get the slide deck um, to get more information on, on how these uh, Boolean search things work. But again, I want to keep this at a really high level in the sense of um, high level as I'm looking down, I don't want to dig too far into it. Our goal for this webinar was to get you up and running for those of you who are trying to catch up to what Jennifer McClure is going to present um, at the SHRM event. So another thing that LinkedIn has started doing back this fall, again, I'm going to click out of here, come back to my profile, or come back to my dashboard, is that you can see articles by different industries or by different topics. So instead of having to go to a lot of different websites to find information in a day, I have, I have information coming in about careers and recruiting industry, computer software industry, so on and so on, IT, internet, venture capital. And so I can start clicking all the articles that are being posted, linked, that are being uh, uh, linked to from LinkedIn by users to the original articles on Inc.com, uh, VentureBeat, um, Wall Street Journal, CNN, things like that. So you can play around with this. So you have, uh, if I click on Browse All, these are all the different industries that you can follow articles for. And you'll notice that I only have uh, four or five of them picked, but just to kind of give you an idea. I know I'm kind of whizzing through this fast. The good news is that you're going to be able to come back to this and hit pause and hit replay as much as you need to. For those of you who have whose company do not yet have a LinkedIn company profile, it's free to do. Um, again, log out of here for a second. If you just come up here to clicking on putting this over companies. Start going into there. If your company yet doesn't yet have a profile, I would strongly encourage you to do that. Okay, so it's a free tool to be able to use. Um, it allows you to be able to promote your company. It allows for folks to be able to follow your company. So when you're posting updates, like over here, Douglas Machine, which is up in Alexandria, Minnesota, at this time they have 197 followers. The cool part is they can also have uh, a catalog of the product. So again, LinkedIn users can find more information about your company, um, what it's selling. Um, company profiles can also be showing like who in your company is on LinkedIn, um, people who are coming and going. You can give statistics, things like that. So again, just kind of a quick little idea of some things on LinkedIn that you can use. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at the dashboard here. My it's making a light. Oh, I'm going to keep going. Um, so the idea is that you can be able to have these company profiles to be able to promote what's going on uh, at work. So Facebook is, so that's enough on LinkedIn for a moment. Coming over to Facebook. So Facebook, right, it really is a bit of a walled off website. Um, again, it's, it's, you can have a, a, a company pages on Facebook. But I'm going to just talk to you a little more about it as an HR practitioner or a recruiter or as a business person. Some things to think about with your LinkedIn or your Facebook profile, sorry. Um, things that you can do with your Facebook profile that can also um, sort of be work-related. 
Um, in the education and work section on Facebook, I would suggest you that you want to include your resume. Here's why. Do all of your friends, family, whoever it might be, do they know what you do? A, they might be looking for a job or know someone who will one day. B, you might be looking for a job one day. So it's this idea of, yes, Facebook is more of a personal website for most of us, but I would include my resume on my profile. Something else to think about, um, on Facebook you can have your uh, privacy settings set in different ways. So I can make it so that the world can see my education and work section on Facebook, and they can't see anything else. I can wall it off so that just this one little section of my profile is public. So again, like on LinkedIn, uh, a lot of companies now have pages. You can follow them to see what's going on at a company. Um, almost every networking group, professional association, you know, the folks at Winona State will have a Facebook group. Participate and know, see what's going on, um, promote your company um, appropriately, don't be a spammer. So it's this idea of being able to take some of the Facebook personal side of things and you can make it a little bit more professional. So I would go back to um, slides ago. In fact, I'm just going to quick go back in the slides. So if you are attending the, uh, of course you are, right? when you will be attending the Winona SHRM event um, next Monday and Tuesday, I would be putting as a Facebook update that I'm attending the Minnesota, I'm going to be attending the Winona SHRM um, conference, um, and I'm going to be following and listening to Jennifer McClure that day. I would do an update like that. So yes, it's a personal website, but let folks know what you're up to. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on Twitter. Um, and this might be a little bit more than just a little bit of time. It seems to be the um, one of the most asked about HR uh, practitioner. You know, questions I get the most from HR practitioners is what's this Twitter thing and should I be involved and whatnot. So I'm going to assume for the moment that since you're listening to the session, you're like, yeah, so I don't have to convince you of that part. So the first thing I want you to think about again is use it for probably a more professional photo. Now you'll notice now in three slides on three different websites that have three different photos. It's only because those, uh, when I did the screenshots, I had that particular photo on that day. I will say that all of my sites that I have, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, my blog, the photo is always the same on all of them. So I might change my photo, say in two weeks, but I'll change my photo on five seconds. That sounds like a lot of work. It will only take me all of six and a half minutes to do. Okay. So what we're looking at right here is my is is a headline, um, and I'll show you what the new one looks like in a second. Um, you need to know that um, Facebook has updated the way it looks. Uh, it, they have now something called timeline. Um, Twitter has now also changed its look or its um, user interface. So um, things have changed a little bit. So some of the slides um, might look just a tad bit different than the way um, Twitter looks today. Okay, enough of all that. First thing to think about is, um, you'll see here again that I have used at MN Headhunter. Again, the nickname has stuck, so I use it. I could use debatting because it's available, but why bother? Because again, nobody can spell it. So you might be able to do, again, last name, first name, last name, whatever it might be. Um, you can use... Um, you can just use nicknames, but I, if you are using a nickname like I did, make sure you put Paul the Beddings in, um, um, in there so that people do know who you are. Again, nearest large city, um, you could do Winona, you could do Rochester. Um, some, I know some folks in Winona who actually use Minneapolis, St. Paul, just because it's, uh, they might be on a more of a national level in scope, so they'll put Minneapolis just to alleviate any confusion. Um, I'm going to suggest that you want to follow whoever are your local cool kids, or you're, if you're into marketing, follow the marketing folks. We'll, talk, we'll show you a little bit how to do that here in a minute. Um, add yourself to directories. We'll talk about lists in a moment, groups. You'll see this hashtag, Winona Sherm 2012, MN Sherm, that's Josh's group, TCHRA is the Twin Cities Human Resources Association. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, so hang on. Here's some quick terminology. So a tweet is 140 characters, including letters, numbers, and spaces. Think of a tweet as a text message um, that the world could effectively see. 
to where Facebook is completely walled off, Twitter is completely open unless your profile is um, um, hidden. I don't know why anybody would want to do that, but I know some college kids do because they're saying inappropriate things, but us adult folk, we're not going to tweet anything stupid, or at least we shouldn't be. When you see the at WLLM Gould, that's Bill Gould of the Winona Sherm Group. When I do an at William Gould, um, I'm sending a message to Bill that he can see. Um, I can see it, and anyone who's following both of us can see it. So that's like, hey, William Gould, I'm looking forward to next week's event. Um, he and I, anyone following us both can see that. Where it says D with a space in William Gould, that's me sending a direct message to Bill, only Bill can see it. And let's say that uh, Bill said something really, really, really cool, right? I can retweet it, which is kind of like forwarding a message. I can RT at William Gould and whatever the tweet is. And I'm going to show you a little bit what that's like here in a moment. Here's what a river um, of my tweets looked like a few weeks ago, I guess it would be. Okay. I'm going to pause out of this part for a second. So here's what Twitter looks like. So you'll see earlier this evening, I did put in here, settling in to redo the social media, the basics webinar for the Winona folks, for the folks at Winona Sherm 12. That's the hashtag for next week's event. You'll also see that uh, earlier tonight, so some of my stuff is personal, some of my stuff is business, that's all up to you. I did, because it's a near full moon tonight, take a photo, put it on Twitter. Um, I'm kind of a... I am a, 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 a an I've become a bit of an aggressive, very amateur photographer. I do know that 93 people have looked at my photo tonight, so um, some folks have gotten used to me to be showing things, you know, like photos like that. So it's nothing new to them. So what I want you to think about is this. I'm going to show you a tool called Tweet Deck. I don't want you to get lost in this. This might seem a little bit overwhelming. Over here on the left-hand side is something called All Friends, and that's all the folks I follow on Twitter. What I've done is I have segmented them over a period of time into different categories like sports, local recruiters, national recruiters, so on and so on. Okay. Over here on the right-hand side, you're going to see this where it's kind of scrolling there a little bit. I have put Winona Area Sherm or Winona Sherm um, 12, and I'm always searching for the tweet. So you'll see that my last tweet about the, the webinar is on there. Here's one from Sherry. Um, she's retweeting, right, forwarding out the Winona Area Sherm tweet that says, have you registered for our spring conference yet, and give them the link. Here is, uh, here is a tweet from Bill. This is him thanking Josh and I for the social media webinar and the replay link will be posted at, and of course it's not there yet, it's what I'm doing right now. When I clicked on that link, and what it does in Twitter, it brings me to the Winona area sharing page. I'm just pausing for a second to figure out if there's anything else. I'm used to doing this with an audience and getting questions. So I follow different things. Like I have a recruiter event that's this Friday here in Minneapolis, and so um, that's what this second column here. Lisa Rosendahl, the HR, what is her title? HR manager um, at the, uh, um, she's up in St. Cloud at the VA, and so she's driving down for the event. So she's saying how she gets to hang out with me next week. Uh, she doesn't even care what's on the agenda. Um, and she retweets, she said this last Friday, by the way. And then MINREC, M-N-R-E-C, that's the little tag that we use for our recruiter group here in Minneapolis. So you'll see here there's been some tweets over the last days. Um, and it's weeks further into the week. So you don't have to be a putter outer. <laughs> What's that sound like a great way of phrasing? You don't have to be a putter outer of content. You can be a consumer, just a consumer of content. Right here, this middle, this column that I'm highlighting here right now, these are all of the IT 
websites, magazines um, that um, are out there, and I, I don't always follow this. A, a friend of mine here in town, her name's Katie Tierney, she calls Twitter constant partial attention. And the idea behind it is that Twitter is always on, um, but I'm not always paying attention to it, right? So I just kind of want to give you that. This is a way of being able for me to stay in touch with my industry, in the IT industry specifically. So you can just be a person who follows information and absorbs it, okay? So here's what I want to be able to show you, coming back to my profile, which was this next slide. I know there are more than this, but I have about 580 people in or near Minneapolis, St. Paul, that includes the folks down there in Winona and Rochester and St. Cloud and Duluth. There are 561 folks who I know who are on Twitter in some capacity, in some recruiter or HR capacity, whether it's a corporate or a search consulting firm folks. So what you can do is you can come check out my list, which we have linked to on the slide. Um, we can go, okay, who are these folks? So the list of members. So um, Noe, I just started following her yesterday. She's a recruiter at Medtronic, okay? Um, Amanda is a talent acquisition specialist in healthcare. Um, keep on scrolling down. Um, Nerdery Jobs. Nerdery is an uh, IT company here in Minneapolis, a web development shop, so I can find out um, what are they up to? Uh, Minneapolis Fed, as in the Federal Reserve, has their career page. I follow that. Um, down here, again, you'll see Winona Sherm, right? So if I were you, I would uh, check out the Winona Sherm group. I'm going to click on it. So if you're trying to figure out who to follow, like how to get into this thing, figure out who is Winona Area Sherm following. And scroll down and be like, oh, so Angela is uh, uh, involved in the uh, Central Illinois Sherm Group. Okay, there's the Oklahoma HR. Hey, cool. They're following me. Keep on going down. Jennifer McClure. So she's uh, the one who she's Jennifer is who's doing the presentation next week. So now click on her. Click view more tweets. Jennifer is a warehouse of information, of articles um, on recruiter, HR industry, career-related stuff. Jennifer is really, she's super cool. Um, I can't say enough things, enough nice things about her. Um, and in a lot of ways, I call her my sister that I never had. So you can see her. She's got a new photo of herself that she just updated today, right? Her bio, she loves horses. She's got a link to her blog or to her company site. She's in Cincinnati, Ohio. So again, I don't want to get much further into this. I just want to get you to the part where you may create a Twitter account before you come to the uh, Winona Sherm event next week. And you could start tweeting out or start linking to the folks at the event or start putting out and quoting Jennifer in the process um, while you're at the event. Okay. So again, I kind of probably want to stop right about there um, so that we don't get too far into this. Again, I just want to get you up and running. What I want to be able to say about Twitter is this, or Facebook, or LinkedIn, don't be afraid of the technology part. You're not going to break anything. It's not nuclear launch code. You're not going to kill the internet. You're not going to do anything stupid. So don't worry about it. Play around with this stuff and, and see if it's something that you can get into, whether it's for personal use or for business. Let's just uh, screenshot some of the stuff I just showed you live. One of the things that you can do is use what's called a URL shortener or like a website, right? The website, some URLs are really, really, really long, and you only get 140 characters. So you can see here, like this first one, uh, whoops, whoops, twice. So I can shorten, you know, a URL that was, you know, 115 characters down into one that's 14. And the cool part of it, is I can see how many people have clicked on it. It shouldn't shock you that uh, um, some of my sports-related material gets, gets clicked on more often than maybe my recruiter or HR material does. Because the people who are following me, not everybody's into recruiter or HR stuff, right? But again, it allows you to gauge 
interaction that you've had with folks? Like, is what you're tweeting of interest to other folks? You may, you may change it from there. You may do more work stuff or more personal stuff or more stuff about Winona or whatever town that you're in. That's just a quick screenshot of TweetDeck, which I was just showing you. Here are some resources. So you can click on these links when you get the slide deck. Twitter in plain English. It's a really cool four and a half minute YouTube video. It's a couple years old, but it's funny. If you don't, if you don't get what Twitter is, if Twitter still hasn't made sense to you while I'm giving you this this uh, quick session, click on this YouTube video. It'll be a huge help to you. Um, the top 100 recruiting or industry pros. Um, this is a link to one of Jennifer's blog posts. So you click on this recruiter or HR, <laughs> excuse me, one or two. Um, this is going to be uh, uh, the list that I was just showing you with the folks in Minnesota that I know that are on Twitter. I'm going to add before I give you the send out the slide deck, but these are the, uh, whoops, whoops, twice. This is the, uh, the, the, the folks who I would follow leading up to the event um, there in Winona. So again, the Sherman Group, Jennifer, Bill, Sherry, um, Josh, and I. I don't want to get too far into the blog stuff, but we had a couple of questions the other day uh, about blogs. So I have a list of both Minnesota recruiter and HR folks who have blogs, as well as some national ones. Unbridled Talent, this is Jennifer's list. ERE.net and recruitingblogs.com have more information in there over the last six years than you would ever know what to do with. So you can find blogs to talk about Man, everything from from um, compensation to benefits to recruiting to general HR stuff to legal stuff. Um, so I'm just going to kind of again leave it right there for the moment. Um, click on any of these links. Figure out here's what what I put out. Here's what you know. Here's my list. Here's Jennifer's list. Um, lots and lots and lots of information. Which is the other thing I want to be able to say to you, which is this: Don't get overwhelmed by this stuff. Um, right, the internet's here to stay. Uh, when I started using the, you know Facebook five years ago um, to connect with the students at the U of M that I was mentoring, like their friends were wondering who's the old guy on Twitter. I'm 41 now, so I was 36 then. Um, but the fastest growing demographic last I heard on Facebook was women 50 plus. Right, Facebook's not just a kid site, it's not just a university site, they're for high school folks. So. Kind of grasp this, not grasp, embrace this a little bit. LinkedIn's not going to go anywhere for the short run. Facebook's not going anywhere. Twitter's here for a while, too. So play around with this stuff and see if it uh, makes some sense to you. So let's say you've done some of the things that I've been talking about. One of the things I would suggest you doing is then to add these little social media icons here to the foot of your email address so that when you're sending information out to peers and candidates and whoever it might be, they can start following you on these sites. You probably want people to be checking out your LinkedIn profile. So here's what I've added. How to do it, how to add it into your this is through Outlook. Gmail is pretty simple to do too. So you can just click this link and find out how to be able to add these buttons to your Outlook email signature. And then I also added a link to some icons, these colorful graphic images. Uh, there were hundreds of these last I looked um, to um, figure out what you want to do for size and for style in your, in your email footer. But definitely one of the things that I would do. This might get a little bit involved. Some of you might be thinking, but Paul, I'm never going to be on YouTube. I'm never going to build a blog. I'm never going to be, I'm never going to host photos online, you know, photo albums or whatever. That's true. You might not today. You might in five years. There's this site, Namecheck, N-A-M-E-C-H-K, where you can put in the name that you're searching for. So you could be putting in your last name, right? First initial, last name, whatever it might be. Excuse me. And then you can hit check, and it will show you if that name is available or taken. So you'll see here, Facebook, YouTube, eBay, WordPress, Twitter, MySpace. I have MN Headhunter on all of the ones that say taken. Some of these, I'm just squatting on it so that no one can grab it later, right? There would be nothing worse than having somebody grab MN Headhunter on a blog site that I might want to use one day. That would really suck. 
So I squat on my name, both my nickname and my last name. Again, for some of you, you're going, well, that's just more that I'm ever going to need. Again, you say that today, but flash forward a few years and think if you still might be having that opinion. So I would squat on some of these sites if I were you. All right. So we would normally ask questions at this point in time. And when we did the presentation the other day, we also um, had an issue with a question box on the, uh, on the uh, webinar. So uh, we didn't get to some of the questions that folks had asked. And I didn't get very many of them via email either. But here's what I want to be able to say to you. Here is Josh's information. Um, this is being able to find Josh um, at Josh Big Link Up. This is Josh's email address. You can click on these links. You can find them on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Same for me. Here's my email address, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, and I will skip what this RSS feed thing is for now. Here's the moral to this. A, I'm hoping that um, however long this was, um, it was actually a little bit shorter than I was thinking it was going to be. The goal for this presentation is I go back through these slides, um, and I'm going to scroll through them really, really fast, is really just to be able to get you up and running on these sites. Okay? Think about how you can share the information that you have. How can you create a following for you or for your company? But really, I want to be able to get your toe or maybe your foot into the pool. And then have you come to the, the Sherm event next week with Jennifer, Jennifer McClure and have her take you through this stuff. A little bit of the 101. Here's some best practices. What I'm hoping now is, again, as I quick whip through the slides going forward, I'm hoping now that you at least feel comfortable that when Jennifer says, here's how you tweet something, you know what a tweet is now. Or when they say, here's how you read, she's like, hey, you're going to retweet this. Now you'll know it's like forwarding a message. So I'm really hoping that this was able to get you interested, get you involved, get you curious, get you practicing some of this stuff. Again, send Josh and I an email. Um, we are going to be hosting a uh, a social gathering Monday night, um, which you can find more information about here. Clicking the spring conference link. And if you scroll down just a pinch, Monday from 5.30 to 7.30 at the Riverside, Jefferson's Riverside Center, uh, we're going to have to get together. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the social media stuff, things like that. And again, I strongly encourage you to attend um, Jennifer's session. So with that, I'm not able to take any questions or whatnot, but send them to Josh, send them to me, save them for next Monday or Tuesday. Um, but definitely, you know, walk up to Josh and I and say, hey, let us know how this webinar was. For those of you who listened to the other one the other day and we had some tech issues, let us know how that went too, for better and for worse. So with that, I'm going to stop. So. Um, I'd say have a good evening, but I don't know when you're going to be hearing this. But um, again, look forward to seeing you next week. And thanks to the folks at Job Big Link Up for uh, letting us put this together, and, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Take care.